Hi, happy Friday. Hope you had a fantabulous Halloween this past Tuesday. I know I did. It was freezing where I live, and I got to trick or treat with my daughter because having a child is an excuse to dress up yet again and let the inner child come back out. Great to see every single one of you today. Thanks for everyone who, who watches these and interacts with these because I've genuinely enjoyed that connection and each and every one of you I'm very grateful for. You're honestly the reason I keep making stuff like this. So today I'm talking about Premiere Pro and three quick tips to dramatically improve your workflow and improve the speed at which you get things done. The first one is when you're editing your project, typically all your footage after you import it is gonna be in the project window. And I've seen a lot of people, and I've done this myself, open that up, go to the thumbnails view and edit from that dragging those onto your timeline. Well, I found it to be much simpler and easier and more consistent with how my brain works to pull those all out. If you pull every single piece of B-roll you have into a timeline by itself, stack that timeline above your edit timeline. You can scrub through that way. You can put in markers. You can set your in and out points if you want to, or you can just slice everything down to how you want it and drag from there down into your actual edit. That way you're not looking at the thumbnails over in the project window, not knowing exactly how long it is conceptually visually, you have to look at the timestamp and find out that way. And of course you can set your in and out points that way, but I just don't find that to be near as intuitive as putting it out in its own sequence right above yours, bringing those down from there. The other way that really works is if you're doing interviews, the best way I've found to go through an interview is to set it in its own little sequence above yours, again, above your edit, go through them that way. You can set your markers, you can cut, you can sync your audio there and then just pull it down from there and, and clean it up. So that has dramatically affected my workflow. The second one is while you're down in your edit and you want to do like a batch color process for everything, the best way I've found to do that is after all your clips are colored down in your actual edit, you just create an adjustment layer by going over to your project panel, hitting new item, hit adjustment layer, make sure the settings are consistent with what you're using in your actual sequence for your edit. Create it, drag it into your edit, put it on top of everything, drag it out through the entire length of your entire sequence. Then you'll drop a Lumetri color plugin on top of that so that you can actually put a LUT or a film look or just a general preset that you wanted to batch edit everything in your in your whole project to tie all the color data together, make some sort of a uniform look after your color correction. And then depending on how that looks, what I'll typically do is I'll take the opacity of the entire adjustment layer down a bit. If you're using multiple plugins on one adjustment layer, you use opacity. Otherwise, if you're working in the Lumetri color plugin, which I found to be just the best possible thing for this application, you can just be in the creative part, add your LUT, make your adjustment right there and just dial back the intensity right there in the Lumetri plugin. But again, make sure your colors are consistent throughout your clips. You're gonna have to do those on a clip by clip basis, but the adjustment layer over everything will help you from having to copy and paste that from each clip to clip, saving a lot of time, a lot of headaches, a lot of money. Time is money, money is time. That's stupid, shut up. The final tip I wanna share has to do with rendering. Now, if you're like me and you use any sort of effects that take up a lot of RAM and aren't gonna be able to play back smoothly, like if you're slowing things down or using like a morph cut feature or you have a noise reduction plugin, it's gonna slow down your edit so you won't be able to see it in real time. So a lot of times I will set in and out points, hit render sequence in to out. And what that'll do is just render that piece so that you can continue editing and scrubbing through your footage in real time, not have to worry about lagginess. Well, if you have those in your edit and you're done and you want to hit export, be sure and select the feature that says use previews at the very bottom of that export window because what that will actually do is take the already rendered sequence pieces, the in and out points that you've already designated to render and use those in its rendering so it doesn't have to re-render those portions that you have already rendered in the sequence. All that's going to do is save you time on the export because a lot of times that's the biggest clog in the whole system. Exports take a long time. Computers take a long time to process all that data. Even if you you have a fancy Apple machine like I do, it still takes a long time, so that'll save you some time. So that's all for this week. Short, simple, and to the point. Hopefully these three tips help you and your workflow speed up because that's what we're all looking for is efficiency. Let me know what you think in the comments, if you use these techniques or not, or if this helped you. You know how I love to interact with keyboards. It's the way we talked today in 2017 on November 2nd. November 3rd, 2017. Hit like if you enjoyed this video and hit subscribe if you want to see more content like this. And I genuinely appreciate each and every one of you that does choose to subscribe to this channel. I've been very grateful for that and interacting with each and every one of you has been really enjoyable for me and it's truly the reason why I continue doing stuff like this. So hopefully this helps and I will see you next week.